Welcome to Transformation with Martinet. Martinet Emmons is a transformational life coach who broke free from childhood abuse, sexual trauma, and overcame cancer to become a powerful force of healing and hope for others. Martinet describes traumatic events as fierce emotional tsunamis. They can leave impending doom and destructive tidal waves of emotions that hit you when you least expect it. Martinet helps her clients dive into the depths of their trauma and pain as she stands fiercely advocating for them to shine a light on those experiences and find the lesson in the pain. She serves as a beacon of hope that guides you to see the strength, lessons, and purpose that can be born from the pain. You can feel alive with purpose again when you awaken your dormant strength, step into your power with a sense of peace, and discover a new wave of hope with the right tools and support. Martine and her guests are here shining their lights today through empowering stories of hardship and transformation to inspire you to find hope and to see that there is a beautiful blue ocean of serenity, happiness, and fulfillment in your future. Transformation with Martine starts now. Welcome, welcome everyone to Transformation with Martine. This is where we conquer everything and compromise nothing. I'm so excited to be here as I always am. My regular listeners know that. So for those of you who don't know, my show is every Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern, and we are live. And uh, so you well, and you know you can listen, you can listen everywhere where podcasts are shown, and you can also um, you know, um, watch on on Facebook. So Anyway, without further ado, I'm really excited about my guest today because we have a lot in common <laughs> and um, it's always kind of fun that way because we can we can understand each other in so many different ways, including, I didn't mean to start this way, uh, the show, but like Catholic guilt, I mean, it, it's a real thing. It's something that is part of us. Um, but without further ado, I want to welcome Tracy Berger. Welcome, my friend. Thank you, Martin. A. Thanks for having me today. Absolutely. You know, um, as you know, I've been reading your book and you start out in the beginning with a quote. And I'd like to read that if you don't mind. Sure. Sure. Okay. So um, this is a quote by Anne Lamott. And she says, the function of freedom is to free someone else. And if you are no longer racked or in bondage to a person or way of life, tell your story, risk freeing someone else. And this has been so much a part of my life. One of my coaches told me years ago, that our stories are not for us. Yes. Yes. We it is meant to share. So this could let other people share. So how about you sharing yours with us? Uh, you share my story? Yes. Yeah. And I, I totally agree with that statement, that quote mm-hmm. um, about sharing story. And I'm I'm compelled to in the fact because I learn so much and I think people yes. do learn so much in their life that mm-hmm. I hope people are compelled to tell their story, share their mm-hmm. story, because mm-hmm. we are all in this world together. <laughs> Yes, you know, yes. on the human human condition. Um, but my story, and I tell it in the book, is um, it really started with my mom moving down towards me, 1,200 miles near me, uh, about five mm-hmm. years before she passed and after my dad had passed away. Mm-hmm. We had lived apart for 25 years, you know, went on my own after high school and left home. And she came back. I had three kids. And I thought, she was, she needed some um, medical help. She needed, you know, couldn't be on her own. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, I can take her and we can, you know, I can take care of her. We can have a great relationship and everything would be great. Um, But it didn't happen that way. It drove me Mm -hmm. crazy. She drove me Mm -hmm. crazy. I let her drive me crazy is Mm -hmm. what it really was. And so that just sparked in me um, at one point at the realization that I have to figure this out because I really thought I was capable of, um, being with her, loving her more, um, mm-hmm. and having this relationship with her, but she wasn't going to change and I needed to change. So that's why I wrote the book. And then, you know, it, it, I had to tell my story through, which is that I experienced childhood emotional neglect, mm-hmm. which we can talk about a little more in a minute. Um, mm-hmm. But just the things that go along that with, you don't get to share emotion, you don't understand emotions and feelings as a child. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you, you grow up not being able to express them and lots of things happen to you. Um, you feel lonely, you feel alone, mm-hmm. uh, depression sometimes happens. You're kind of lost in the world. Um, you don't really know where you fit. You feel like you have to do, go everything alone. 
And mm-hmm. even being dependent on somebody else or something else really frightens you really because you're mm-hmm. so independent. So I learned all those things. I suffered from depression um, in my 20s and 30s and you know, and still do some today, but turned that around through some books and reading and just self-exploration. And um, so that's really kind of my story and that kind of write about how that all those things in my life kind of led to being able to write about my book or my story, mm-hmm. being able to write my story and share it. And um, I became um, a life coach and mm-hmm. oh, you know, I do workshops and work with people to try and help them similar to you, Martin, mm-hmm. just trying to get people to understand that, you know, you're not your past, but mm-hmm. your past is important. Um, yeah. Give people hope that yeah. they aren't caught in your, in their head, in the rumination mm-hmm. of their head, not, not, caught in the guilt, the past guilt, the past fear, the past trauma, mm-hmm. um, and to really help people understand where they can be in their life and and, and where they fit in the world. That right. mm. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I, I was, um, well, yeah, I would like to go further into emotional neglect for sure, because I, I, I know, well, I, I've been saying a lot on my show and just in my world of coaching and the therapists that I work for as well on the side in my virtual assistant business, um, that mental health needs to be as acceptable as getting a physical every year and yes. all that. So it's just really important that we just keep talking about yes. it. And that's part of why I do this show as well, not just hope, but just to like, there needs to be a platform to talk about this, you know, whether it is emotional neglect, whether it is grief and loss and trauma and there's just so many things that need to be spoken about and 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 get rid of shame around it yeah you know Uh, yeah you know one of the things you said um it just kind of has stuck in my my head to talk about too is you wrote about you swinging you used to love to swing so did I and I still do Mm -hmm. um and then you said that um sometime when you swing you feel dizzy and sick now is that because of what you went through or because I've been trying to think about that myself. I also feel a little off, yeah. but I also feel exhilarated. How about you? I mean, oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. You know, I never thought of it about it too much. But I still love to feel the wind in my face, mm-hmm. and I sometimes do that just through biking and being outdoors. Yeah. But I do love to swing. Mm-hmm. And I just you know a couple of years ago when I was on this, I don't know where I was in some playground with the mm-hmm. dogs or something, and started to swing, and I just got dizzy. And I couldn't figure it out. I was like, I love to swing. I love this. So mm-hmm. maybe, and I wrote about that. I did write that, about that in my book that I do get dizzy. And so mm-hmm. I'm not sure to answer your question, but it may be, yeah. it may be that it was such a long ago memory for me. That mm-hmm. it was such a good memory that swinging. And I guess it was kind of releasing when I was younger that mm-hmm. I don't know if that has something to do with where I am today or not, but that's a good point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting to think about, huh? Yeah. Just how things are in our body, how they, how they remind us of, of things. And you, you haven't even thought of it in years maybe, but then it just suddenly arises up and it's like, Ooh, but yeah. as coaches, you know, we've been trained of that awareness, which is so key. Yes. You know, it's just to listen what our beautiful vessels are telling us. You yes. Know? Have you read uh body keeps the score? Uh-huh. I am. I've actually, yeah, I've got, um, well, a big notebook that I've started taking <laughs> notes in because it's like, I, I want to, it, it resonates with me so deeply that I've got to keep going yes. back. Yes, me too. Me too. Yeah. But that's, that. some of that, that trauma stays with Ooh. you in different ways and it manifests itself in different ways. And yeah. that's kind of how that childhood emotional neglect does. You mm-hmm. don't really realize it where it came yeah. from, but it's there. It's inside you. Yes. You know, I bet it's the same for you. I, I hear sometime I've been, I've been trying to help more young people these days as well. I didn't think I would, I thought it would be more women, you know, forties mm-hmm. on up. Yeah. But a lot of children lately, it, it's, it's, um, I want to help them so bad. And sometimes I know that they've just got to, they don't have the life skills that we do. I'm talking teens. They don't have the life skill that we do, but, um, it's, it's kind of like a, I try to explain like seasons or just ebbs and flows or ocean waves coming in that you're not always going to feel like this. Yes. And that's a hard thing to explain. How do you, how do you do that or in your own life and with your clients? It is really hard. And I, mm-hmm. I, you know, this is in retrospect, thinking about when I was going through depression, mm-hmm. you know, thinking that I'm a depressed, I'm a depressed person. And that was 
I had, I struggled not only with the feelings of depression, but mm -hmm. that I'm not this good person, you know? And mm -hmm. so I think about that now as like, that was a phase in my life or mm -hmm. I learned through it. I grew mm -hmm. through it. And so, yes, I talk with my clients about that, how this is what you're feeling right now. You know, mm -hmm. remember when you didn't feel this two years ago, you're feeling mm -hmm. it now. It doesn't mean you're going to feel it two years from now those mm -hmm. kinds of things and try and put people, give them perspective on that. But mm -hmm. yes, just the, the whole retrospective thing and writing a book about, you know, pieces of your life really puts that into focus. It's like, wow, I've really changed, you know, and yes. I'm going to change more. It gives you hope, <laughs> what yes. you're all about. It's like, it yeah. gives you hope that this is a season. And mm -hmm. I always think about well, what can I learn from this season? That's yep. my kind of my mantra now. It's like, okay, this is happening now, but what can I learn from it? You know, it may mm -hmm. be negative, but there's something to learn from here. And that that's the positive. That's what life is for. And so I try to talk about that a little bit more. It's like, where are you in now, but where can you go with this? And what can you mm -hmm. use from it or utilize from it to grow and move forward? Absolutely. And, you know, without these experiences, like yeah, we can have all kinds of training. I've got all kinds of it, but without my experience to back it up, it's not, people can't really relate to us. I don't think if we don't share what's really happened, what's, what's, what's gone on in our lives. Yeah. We could do all kinds. I've got tons of different modalities and techniques that I can do yeah. to help you with whatever. However, if I have a story to relate uh -huh. to, to somebody that uh -huh. seems to work so much better as it did with my, I mean, the coaches I've been drawn to have had similar experiences. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. That's part of um, when, what I realized writing the book and when mm -hmm. people respond to different stories, it's like that connection that, and how we need that human connection mm -hmm. um, and how that just yeah. helps you grow as a person to know you're not alone, to know mm -hmm. that there's somebody else that has that similar, very similar experience of like some people said we could have had the same mother, you know, kind of thing but it makes you feel okay. And there's a story, yeah. um, talk about my son had o has OCD mm -hmm. and he was di diagnosed at 10 years old. Mm -hmm. um, when we first saw a therapist, that relief that came over him, knowing that he wasn't alone, yes. you know, that that was the thing. It's like, we're not alone in this. We're not alone in our grief. We're not alone mm -hmm. in our depression. We're not alone in the world. Um, mm -hmm. So and that I think the whole writing the book and getting it published really put that home to me as someone again who always thought I was alone or had to do it by myself yeah. really uh, hammered that home that I need people I need to mm -hmm. experience and share with people yes yes gosh one of my um well one of my team members colleagues or whatever she always says Yana like hashtags Yana you are not alone yeah. That's and uh, yeah. And I try to to put that out there to the younger people, at least in my experience so far, don't resonate so much. They don't think that anybody else can have it as bad as them mm -hmm. at this point. Mm -hmm. But I'm hoping that I find the right phrase or the right something. And I, and I guess it's going to be different for everybody of what's going to hit them. But yeah, but like you, your son, I mean, 10 years old, it's like, mm, gosh, this is great to know that I'm not alone. That is that's beautiful beautiful yeah so we're going to take a break in a moment and we'll come back and talk about more transformation because that's what okay. we do over here thank you everyone Welcome back, everyone, to the place where we conquer everything and compromise nothing. My guest today is Tracy Berger, and we've been talking about transformation on, on every level and sharing our stories and how we can, um, with sharing our stories, give other people permission to share theirs, and it really is freeing to do so. So, Tracy, what is the name of your book and where can people find it? I should have said that before. That's okay. It's uh, Running Away From Home, mm -hmm. and it's a memoir, and it is on Amazon, available on Amazon and bookstores. So yeah. you can find it there. Yes. And I really recommend it. It's been a really good, I'm not completely done yet, but like I was telling Tracy on a break is that I, I like to really absorb. I like to take my time. I don't like to rush through something, whether somebody's going to be on my show or whatever. I want to read and absorb, um, especially with people, you know, that I resonate with. So, um, you know, we were talking about childhood and neglect and um, I, I know so much about this, not only in my own life, but just hearing about 
other people and just how, you know, this whole digital world is how it, it's, it's getting now. It's like people don't even have conversations, you know, when you go to a restaurant and everything and the parents are on the phones and the children are probably playing on their, yeah, on their little tablets or whatever it is. And, um, or even, you know, um, my husband and I went on a date night last night and there were couples all around us that each had their phone. They weren't even paying yes. attention to each other. Yes. So neglect can happen on so many different ways. Can you tell us more about your situation and then how, like, what is your, what is your plan in helping others with this? Yeah. Um, I talk about in, in the book a little bit about what childhood emotional neglect is. And I did a little mm -hmm. bit earlier. I really found out about it while writing the book, you know, doing some research. So I didn't mm -hmm. really recognize it, but when I read a book, it's by Joan East Webb called running on empty. It's all mm -hmm. about childhood emotional neglect. When I read that, I go, this is me. This is me. This is me. This is me. All these yes. things that part of my story was telling, um, about not knowing my place in the world, kind of floundering with the career and what to do mm -hmm. outside of what everybody else told me, um, being um, people pleaser, um, depression, feeling mm -hmm. alone, even when um, I'm not and fully people love me, feeling like I had a lonely childhood when actually it was not too bad, I was pretty happy, those kinds mm -hmm. of things. So I really learned about that, um, which helped me frame a lot of my stories in my book and put some context to it. Um, but, but when I say that and talk about it, you know, what childhood, you know, people need to feel emotions. We are humans. We are, mm -hmm. we, that's part of our being. Um, it's a natural, those are natural feelings. Feelings and emotions are natural, yeah. um, part of the human condition. If you want to think of it that way, that we feel both good emotions and negative emotions. Um, but sometimes we think it's silly or wrong to feel negative emotions or bad emotions and that mm -hmm. we shouldn't talk about them. That's what childhood emotional neglect does. It, it, yeah. um, and not on purpose, not blaming parents or mothers or anything. Mm -hmm. Parents just don't know how to, to uh, process emotions or talk about emotions either. But when you don't, as child, you think that they're bad. You think that mm -hmm. happy emotions or even negative emotions or sad emotions or frustrated feelings are bad and that mm -hmm. you can't talk about them. So we learn that. We learn to stuff them down, shove them down not talk mm -hmm. about them to anybody else or share them with anybody else that it's not something we should show or share with the world. That's what we mm -hmm. learn. Yeah. And so we just um, perpetuate that through adulthood and some of these symptoms of child emotional neglect affect mm -hmm. us as adults. So yeah. I really talk about that more and more with, with my clients um, about that. What, what are you feeling? Let people talk about their feelings because mm -hmm. we don't. And mm -hmm. I think that's one reason why people go to coaches and therapists personally, yeah. that they're bottled up inside and needs an outlet. But I'm also telling people are to just experience the feeling, mm -hmm. you know, what is the feeling? You know, I remember when I was learning about depression and really kind of delving into, um, it was, you know, through books and stuff about what, how to manage my depression mm -hmm. that, I can recognize when I was falling into it. So I can recognize that feeling yeah. to begin with, not when I was deep into it. So I've talked to people about, so when did this start? When did this feeling start? Whatever the feeling was. Sometimes it could be an event or somebody said something, but what was that? And mm -hmm. talk about that and then be able to feel that feeling, be okay with it. Yes. Be okay with feeling sad, mm -hmm. you know, even about maybe something that you might think is trivial. Um, be okay with being depressed. I mean, mm -hmm. I tell people and talk about how I had to befriend my depression. Mm -hmm. In the book, I call it the black dog. I call it um, Fido. I named my depression Fido. And once I did that, Martin, and once I faced it and turned to it, mm -hmm. it was gone, almost like magic. Um, it's mm -hmm. still here with me, but it's not on me. You know, yes. it's okay to be that. And I, you know, it's weird to say I've befriended it. I befriended mm -hmm. my depression. I do mm -hmm. notice when I'm becoming more susceptible to depression, mm -hmm. sometimes I let myself be sad. Yeah. I, I really do. I let myself be sad. I understand why and just feel it. Mm -hmm. But I, and I just don't think you can feel those bad negative feelings without feeling that, or you can't feel the happy feelings without feeling the sad feelings. You can't right. feel joy, bliss, love if you don't feel sadness, loneliness, despair. 
because mm-hmm. those are all the gamut of human emotions. So yes. it's kind of my soapbox, but <laughs> that's oh, how I, I talk it. to people. That's how yes. I talk to people about it. It's like, it's okay. You know, mm-hmm. what is this? Let's explore this. Be okay just sitting with it. Yes. You know, it doesn't mean you have to do anything. I think there's a, I don't know where I got it, but what you resist persists. When you resist persists. When you resist yep. that feelings, when you resist the negative things, they're ongoing, it grows them for some reason. Um, mm-hmm. So that's that's how I'm talking about that. And something that, again, writing this book and thinking about childhood emotional neglect has helped me kind of frame and talk about even better. Mm-hmm. Gosh, sharing our stories does that, doesn't it? Because it does. Yes. Um, I did a compilation book that just came out recently and we it's like a three part. So there's two more I have to write. And just like I've shared my story a lot. It's on my website, but then when it's actually you're writing it on paper, it's like, oh gosh, you know, <laughs> it, it brings up so many more levels. And I think I got a couple more to write. Oh my God. There's <sighs> there's more that you that you really dive into, but at the same time, it's like, oh gosh, I'm learning a lot. And mm-hmm. you know what led me to the body keep score is my personal coach that I've had since 2017. Um, she said she read it for herself to learn yeah. about her, had nothing to do with her clients. And I was that, that like, Hmm, okay. If I can learn more about me, maybe then I can actually be a better coach. And that was, um, so I did that more for me. And like I said earlier, I I keep kind of going back in because the more I can learn, the better I can do. And, um, and, and this whole sharing thing, just gosh, it, it does so much for yourself and everybody around you. And I love naming the depression because mm-hmm. my master coach talks about a lot about um, that. We all kind of have little identities inside of us anyway, mm-hmm. and you can name them, you know, just different mm-hmm. personalities that help you get through, not like civil or anything, but you know, something that got you through yes. these painful yes. times. Yes. Is you can yes. almost go into a different mode to. Yeah. And they got you through a painful time in your past, mm-hmm. maybe, but, and they may not be serving you now, but yeah. they're still there trying, yeah. right? Trying mm-hmm. to protect you and yeah. inter- fam- interpersonal family relations, something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. 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 Our beautiful yeah. brains are always trying to protect us. Yes. Yeah. So you got to say thank you, but mm-hmm. I don't need you right now. I appreciate yeah. what you're trying to do, but I don't need yeah. you right now. Yeah. Um, it's something I realized writing my book, you know, I wrote it really just to process some of this stuff. And I didn't, yeah. I guess writing a book was on my bucket list since I was 20, but yeah, you know, but getting this published, it, I really did it for me. I wrote the mm-hmm. book for me. And then when it was published, yeah. it just helped so many more people. And so oh, that's yes. just what you said, the power of telling a story, sharing it mm-hmm. and the camaraderie too with, you know, I've yep. made new friends, I've, you know, um, had some work, good, great work groups and um, work studies about it. About different mm-hmm. topics so I think it's I'm feeling good about it but I think it's very healthy hopefully making some change in people and in the world oh yeah yeah for sure and just the just the you know um tips alone connect you know like oh I haven't tried that or you know even somebody who's maybe in the world that we are in our coaching world or whatever it's still like somebody else's just way just some other little thing um mm-hmm. helps as well mm-hmm. a little shift micro yeah. move yeah. 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 That's what I, I've taken a lot of tips from people. <laughs> Just one yeah. little thing. Yeah. It does wonders. So where does, cause we, I, we grew up the same, you know, we have a lot in common that I didn't even realize until the book, but um, how was it with you in the Catholic church and the whole guilt and everything that was going on for you? Oh boy. Right. <laughs> uh, when, <laughs> <sighs> um, you know, we don't practice Catholicism anymore, um, yeah. but it's still there. I can still sense when it's coming up and mm-hmm. um, can joke about it now. Um, yes. But just grew up in, I always say we grew up in pre-Vatican II uh, church because our mm-hmm. our priest was very heavy handed, um, mm-hmm. very, I don't know. I don't know what the word is, very heavy handed and very strict. Mm-hmm. And our mm-hmm. nuns that we went to for CCD were very strict. And so... I don't know. It just keep it stays with you that guilt and everything you do, you question and wonder. It does. Even though I have a different viewpoint now, it still comes up. Yes, it does for me. And I haven't. Um, Catholic Church never resonated with me, and I've been done with it for I don't know years. 
It's probably yeah. in my 20, early 20s I stopped. Um, I, I do believe in God, though, but just it's a spiritual thing. And I believe I can connect with him anywhere. I don't have to be in a mm-hmm. place or whatever. That's just my mm-hmm. my thing. But there is like if 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 it comes up in my heart or mind, sometimes like mm, I've been bad, like something come up, right. done something bad. I just feel it. Right. Especially right. in the lower part of my body, hip area, like, oh my gosh, something is. And I know that's where that stems from. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's, mine comes in my shoulders and I get a little tense and mm. I, I have a tendency to try to make it right. You know, whatever. Yes. Like, oh, I got to fix this. So yep. I know that that's happening. And my, um, I, someone I work with closely, she has the same experience. So we catch each other a lot. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> It's amazing. My mom, she passed away from dementia in 2014. And it was almost immediately my dad was done too. And he said something to do with the Pope. I don't know. I don't I don't really pay attention. But he said he was done. And he's done everything from like, um, what do you call it? Uh, unity churches to now he's pretty much just Protestant. He just likes to hear about God, but he doesn't care about yeah. really anything else. So it's interesting that he was done when she was gone. Yeah. As One thing well. I'll just say, we uh, my husband's Methodist, and so we went mm-hmm. to the Methodist church for a while. And that what I learned there was a big epiphany to me was different. It's that Jesus loves you because he loves you. And mm-hmm. that makes you want to do good things. In the Catholic yeah. church, I learned if I do good things, God will love me. So it was right. very opposite. So that just really freed me a lot learning. Yeah. That. Like, oh, that really? That's the way it should be. <laughs> way it is. Right. Right. My dad still grapples with a thing like, well, I've done some things in my life that aren't right. I still have to pay. Like when I get wherever I'm going to get, he's going to go over this and this and this. And I'm like, I just don't believe that. Can't believe that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree. <laughs> mm-hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Well, we're going to take a break, everyone, and then I want to come back and I want to talk about Tracy's retreat because it looks so good. (laughs) Peaceful, welcoming, and transformational at the same time. See you all in a few. Welcome, welcome back, everyone, to Transformation with Martinet, where we conquer everything and compromise nothing. My guest today is Tracy Berger, and we've been talking all about transformation, everything from emotional neglect to sharing our stories, just and sharing our stories in books and just all kinds of good stuff here. So catch the catch it from the beginning to end if you've missed anything. So Tracy, tell us about your retreat. I am really excited about it because it's different than any that I've heard of. So tell us where it is and what you get and all that good stuff. Yeah, April 16th through the 20th, um, Mm -hmm. 2023. It's at a beautiful place called Bonnie Bell in Gainesville, Florida. Um, Everybody thinks Florida is at the beach, but this is really a nature retreat, a nature immersion retreat and Mm -hmm. kind of in the countryside in north central Florida. Um, Beautiful barn and um, acreage, um, been in the family for years. That and it's three days, four nights, um, and really three different themes in the day that that bring bring you along to how I kind of see the world and how I've learned to live my life is to really um, be aware. First day is really being aware of your surroundings, being aware of what's inside of you, what, being aware of your thoughts and ideas mm-hmm. and where that's coming from, and just noticing, just noticing things. Uh, second day is about um, accepting those, accepting what's there. Mm-hmm. Like I talked about a little earlier, accepting those feelings, accepting those negative things, accepting what other people are like in your life, et cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the third day is really action. So what do you do when you know this, you know, you're aware of what's going on in your life and inside and outside. Um, you're accepting it, but how do you act towards your values and your integrity um, mm-hmm. in life? What baby steps can you take? So I'm big about um, having an experience for sure. And we'll do some fun things, um, mm-hmm. hay ride, a nature immersion therapy. We're going to do kayaking. Ooh, um, yes. If you're familiar with Michael Singer, he's got his Temple of the Universe here close by. We're going to go visit him. Um, but really taking away um, things that you can do the next day um, in mm-hmm. your life to make really small changes, but really transformative changes. So that's wow. my purpose in it, um, in doing the retreat. Um, I'm very excited about it. So um, you can, I have a website, tracyberger.com that you can look up um, Peace and Purpose Retreat and get more information about it. Ask me, you know, click on the 
link to find more information from me. Um, and I'd love to see you there, see people there. Wonderful. I love it. That sounds, it just sounds really peaceful. And yes, you know, there's always like a draw, you know, everybody thinks Florida, oh, the beach, but there's also just, I, to me, just the whole surroundings, the way it sounds is just peace. It is. You know? it is. Yeah. yeah. Cause oftentimes at the beach, a lot of people there and everything, but this is just something where you can just absolutely relax, spend time with other women and just relax. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It's, about come up? it's about how'd getting you, away. Yes. How'd you come up with the area and like, what drew you to it? Well, I have a good, this actually is owned by a good friend of mine where she just, mm -hmm. um, just transformed her family farm acreage into this beautiful farm, beautiful barn. Um, mm -hmm. She's it's a glamping retreat. So um, not tents, but big, um, big, actually big tents, but with, you know, actual mm -hmm. mattresses and beds and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so we've just, I've just known her for years and she's such a peaceful being herself. Mm -hmm. Um, you have to meet her to, to know that she mm -hmm. is a, a forest nature therapy guide and that's mm -hmm. her passion. Mm -hmm. So she takes people on her farm on uh, hour to three hour trips around her farm into nature to really mm -hmm. notice things, to yeah. really, um, delve into nature and the therapy that plants and animals can give you. So that's her passion. So we just connected. I know I had done a, a retreat a couple of years ago um, with women I knew, um, and I loved that the whole experience. And I just wanted to bring it to more people, and so I think mm -hmm. we'll be able to do that here. Oh yeah, for sure. Just like uh, what well, we were talking about on a break. You know, there's a person I interviewed not that long ago too, and she needs to keep her, her just her whole life, the surroundings, just to keep that calmness in her life. She uh -huh. needs those. I mean, her home is that way, but I mean, she needs to just have it, most of her weekends away are just going, whether it's to walk on the water somewhere or it's, you know, taking her dog and her husband and just going to peaceful places. And I think that is, especially people who have been through a lot of trauma, like we have, or emotional neglect, however you, you know, so many different terms, what um, we need to keep our lives peaceful like that. Yes. Yeah. I, I grew up in the Midwest, you know, across mm -hmm. from a corn and um, soybean field, mm -hmm. you know, dirt yeah. road. We, we didn't live on a farm, but we're surrounded by farms. My best friends owned, you know, grew sheep and, and pigs. Uh -huh. And I didn't really realize until I move away how much I really love that and how much mm -hmm. that gave me, you know, back in my life. So yes, I try to spend some time every day, if it's five minutes or a minute outside, Mm -hmm. and just noticing nature and enjoying nature so it is part of me it's a big part oh of me. yeah yeah it's actually it's just strange we had we moved about a year ago to a um I guess more city part of of Michigan we lived in a little tiny Fenton Fenton the town of Fenton very small and we thought it might be kind of fun just to go somewhere I get closer to my husband's work I work at home to, you know I can I can be anywhere and um, I go for a walk early morning before the traffic starts up, you know, even though we live in a little tiny like cul-de-sac and a little bit, um, you know, away from the traffic, but it, I, I miss that little town, you know, um, I miss the small part, even where I was growing up was more rural area as well. I miss that and I want to yeah. get back to it. I think there's a lot of people who haven't experienced that very much. Mm -hmm. We were just talking about a center for girls in my community that I work yes. with. And those girls haven't been out of their neighborhood. You mm -hmm. know, they haven't been out of their neighborhood in the, in yeah. town. So I, I would love, I'd love people to experience that if they haven't, if they're from a bigger mm -hmm. city, uh, being able to understand the power of nature and the healing power of nature. So that's yes. kind of what this is about. Yeah. And if we can find it earlier in life, the better, right? I didn't even realize it until yeah. later, like, oh, how soothing this is. Even just looking out my office window right now, I've got a, I guess they call it a burning bush, beautiful yeah. red leaves on there. And it's like, oh, it's so soothing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So something for me too, that's like really soothing is lighthouses. I've got a bunch of them out yes, there. Yeah. How about you? <laughs> what? Do you have something soothing? No, <laughs> just like something soothing, even if you can't get in nature, but something that reminds you? Um, let me think. It's really, you know, if I can't get out, it's looking at the sky. 
um, mm-hmm. somehow, you know, it's even in my car and the, the traffic's driving me crazy. I just look mm-hmm. at the sky and I think peaceful. Yeah. It just brings me back, grounds me and just mm-hmm. makes me know that I'm part of a bigger thing rather than, you know, just me or just the car or whatever. So yeah. it, it does going outside for sure. But mm-hmm. even if I'm confined, I can look out the window or whatever and know that I'm still connected and it just brings me down, keeps me level. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So what, what part in your life brought you to know you needed to serve and help? Oh my gosh. I don't know. I think that maybe it was coming back to the Catholic church, but my, Mm -hmm. one of my, um, I don't know, idol or mentor or someone I wanted to be like was mother Teresa in Mm -hmm. my teenage years. And I read somewhere a long time ago that sometimes, sometime in your teens, you really understand what your purpose is in life Mm -hmm. and, I never really found that definitively, but again, retrospectively, that serving part Mm -hmm. of what she did, um, unselfish serving has always been there for me. It's like, how do I do that? Mm -hmm. How do I do that with strangers that you don't know? And how Mm -hmm. compassion, that compassion piece. Um, I used to think I wanted to be um, a judge. I don't know Mm -hmm. why, but that I could, because I felt like I could really be compassionate towards people who were suffering and doing things they probably didn't want to do and things like that. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. It was That's where I think it started sometime um, in my teenage years that, mm-hmm. that watching other people and feeling, feeling alone myself, feeling mm-hmm. uh, out, outside the, the group, if you, if you will, that wanted to bring that compassion and help people to understand that we all are human, that we all mm-hmm. have these feelings mm-hmm. and, um, so that's really the start of it and it took me a long time to get back to that you know in mm-hmm. my life because I was yeah. always doing what other people told me to do as I talk uh, about in the book but um, yep. that's still there it's coming out yeah I get that my mom told me to be a legal secretary and it worked out well and became a paralegal hey you know it worked for a while but it didn't it wasn't what I I knew it wasn't what I wanted but it yeah. was something that paid the bills for quite a while still yeah. does in some areas of my life um so yeah that that's interesting how we follow something but then we feel that soul mm-hmm. calling to do mm-hmm. something else mm-hmm. yeah yeah and that's, that's something I like to do too with clients is bring them back to that because mm-hmm. you know just for my personal life like I've talked about is just got away and doing what other people or what I thought the world was I should be doing or what the world mm-hmm. was telling me to do bringing people back to that what's really Part of their values, their true integrity, if you will, their authenticity. Mm-hmm. I think that's, that's, I think we're put on this earth for a purpose. And so mm-hmm. I think that's what sure. we are supposed to be showing the world or talking about or sharing with the world. So I like to bring people back as much as I can. People don't recognize mm-hmm. that. I don't think um, as much, but really trying to get to people's true nature um, is really um I, I just, I love that. I love talking to people about what they're really, their purpose is. Yeah, me too. Absolutely. Was there a point where, um, at, well, any point, even in raising your children, there's just like, there's got to be more to this, more to life than this. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> All the time. Yesterday. You know? Yes. Gosh, yes. I do. I come back to that a lot. And yeah. I come back always also back to the power of now Eckhart Tolle about this is all you have is now right this, and this is enough mm-hmm. and so I struggle with that that's one of my struggles I struggle with right now being enough always I feel like I have to prove myself or or walk in my purpose at every minute and so um I just have to keep remembering that all I have is now and this is a good moment yes good. that is such a good reminder um I had uh one of my um therapist friends um mention that book again I'm like I know I have it what I do with it and it's like oh I, I lent it to a friend so I just downloaded it again yeah just recently like I think I need to get back in here yeah yeah, yeah it's pretty deep I tried to do a book study mm-hmm. um with virtual one last fall with it but people dropped out it's pretty deep it <laughs> it's is hard to do a There's group no chat on it doubt yes yeah and it's just like just little bits at a time mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. absorb again. yes yeah so before we take a break again, please tell us your book name, where they can get it, and where they can find you. 
It is Running Away From Home, um, New Degree Press uh, publisher, and you can find it on Amazon. Amazon.com, yes. Tracy Berger. Dot com. Tracyberger.com. Yes, you can <laughs> yeah. find it there too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go. And you can find all about her retreat on there too, which looks so darn good. So we'll be back, everyone, with some final thoughts. See you in a few. Welcome back, everyone, to Transformation with Martine, where we conquer everything and compromise nothing. Today's been such a good show. If you have not caught the whole thing, please go back and watch and or listen. My guest today is Tracy Berger, and we've been talking about so many things, transformation. Um, so we, we, we've we talked a lot about childhood emotional neglect, which is huge for both of us. And something that we haven't touched on, which is, well, something we have in common as well, is just mother-daughter relationship. And and how, at least to me, how a lot of my um, my beliefs, how my thoughts were like formed and in my later life, just thinking, is this really how I feel? Is this really how I want to parent? Is this so many things come up in, in, in my head when I think about the relationship? How is it to you, Tracy? Yeah, I, I talked about before it was kind of a struggle when she was older and here mm -hmm. lived um, yep. near me. Um and it kind of was that all through my life. You know, when you have a mm -hmm. parent, you only have a couple parents, mm -hmm. one or two parents, you only have one mom. You don't yeah. know what to expect. You don't know what's good or bad. It, it yeah. is what it is. You have that relationship. Um, and so I never really thought it was a bad relationship, my, mm -hmm. my relationship with my mom, until she did come here when she was older and I was older yeah. and we couldn't really get along. Um, mm -hmm. Then realized that we weren't close. You know, we real. I realized that um, we did have a tough time getting along, and I just mm -hmm. is in this bliss in my head that you know I was the perfect. I have four sisters that I was the perfect daughter to take care of her, to mm -hmm. you know show her happiness in the last years of her life, etc. Mm -hmm. But I struggled so much with that, um, and I think she struggled in her life too. You know, mm -hmm. so that's something I explore in the book too. Is a little bit about her history. What I could find out is she struggled. Her mother died when she was 10. So she didn't have a mother figure mm -hmm. for the most part in her life. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that helping that understanding where she came from helped me, you know, to put some things in the past, understand where she's coming from, understand mm -hmm. that she was neglected too emotionally. She didn't know how to do that. So it is passed on. Um, so I forgot your question now, but, <laughs> you know, but it, but, um, you know, we have this somewhat contentious relationship, but she did teach me so many things. Mm -hmm. And again, mm -hmm. writing about this has really helped me, you know, kind of cherish those things. And there's parts of her I won't never want to be like, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but parts that um, I do want to cherish and hold on to. She had such inner strength, you know, from her childhood and growing up very poor. Um, mm -hmm. that she gave me that I, I'm grateful for. And I, I lean on a lot, um, being strong, independent and, um, and, but it can also, you know, backfire on me sometimes when I don't want to feel or share emotions, but I do cherish that. She shared a lot with me as she was growing up. She was a reader, you know, I'm a mm -hmm. reader. She loved to learn, even though she didn't complete high school, she mm -hmm. loved to learn and she loved to share with her daughter. So yeah. it's a matter of give and take on how you see things with your a parent, I think, or a mother. Mm -hmm. um, I learned through this book that that's a very common theme, like you said, Martine, mm -hmm. um, that mother-daughter relationships. Um, someone said when she read or heard the word dispassionate relationship, that mm -hmm. that was like, that's it. She goes, right. that's the word. That's exactly what my relationship is with my mom. It's mm -hmm. dispassionate. So I don't mm -hmm. hate her. I don't you know, have really strong emotions either way for her. Yeah. And that's hard. It's hard to understand when you see or think everybody else has this great relationship with their mom or mm -hmm. um, loving relationship. You're like, well, mine's not like that. <laughs> you know, my relationship's right. not like that. Right. Um, it's hard. You kind of realize that, oh, mine's different. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not always easy to take, but uh, again, I can appreciate what my mom did give me now that I've gone back and looked at it. And that was the yeah. whole purpose in the book, really. Right. Yeah, I relate to that a lot in um, 
my mom was always super loving. Like everybody loved her. Mm. The only thing is she didn't protect me from being abused mm. by my dad. Yeah. And that was something that just kind of like, that was hard. But then I understood she was really like, well, what am I going to do? I've got my three kids and I'm a stay at home mom. Maybe I, I, she never really said that, but I think she was afraid to go. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, and, and like what you're talking about, like with your mom, like, yeah, my mom's not like other, you know, your friends are talking like, Oh, I have this close relationship with my mom I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm, you know, I, I wanted that with my dad. Yeah. Even, even the hurt that I had with him, I wanted my dad to be proud of me. I wanted this kind of thing. And then it wasn't until later in life. And I've shared with a lot of clients this too. It's like, they only have the capacity to give what they have to give. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, it, it, but once you get that, it's kind of like, okay. Yeah. And realizing what your mom went, went through, what my dad went through. He wasn't yeah. wanted. He was yeah. made clear by his father that he was a big disappointment. And he yeah. married his, his dad married his mother because she thought he couldn't have kids. Yeah. And then when he came along, sad. And you can't, you can't blame. Mm -hmm. That's no. the thing. And then mm -hmm. I, in the book, I, at the end, I said, don't blame my parents for mm -hmm. this. It's not about being angry with them really. Yeah. It's about, this is how it is and how I grew up and I have to deal mm -hmm. with it. I have to mm -hmm. you know work on myself. Yeah. Um, as I told you before, I work with um, girls from the Pace Center for Girls mm -hmm. in, here mm -hmm. in Alachua County, Florida. And I've mentored them. They're teenage girls. And they have such struggles with their mothers, mostly, mm -hmm. um, because their parent, their father is not in the picture at all. But yes. their mother could be in jail, a drug addict, mm -hmm. um, very absent from their life. Um, mm -hmm. Their grandmother's uh, raising them, uh, very abusive. But they still want to be with their mother. They mm -hmm. still love their mother. They just, yeah. that's their tie. It's emotional, it's physical, it's spiritual. So I don't think any of us can get around that, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, as far as the mother daughter mm -hmm. relationship, that it's there. Um, mm -hmm. Whatever the relationship is, it's a strong tie. Yes. Um, and I think that understanding for me that it is strong. Um, not necessarily a positive way, but it's strong. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Um, yeah. It is what it is. And coming to peace with that was a big part of how the book helped me. Mm -hmm. mm. That would be a good, your book would be good to share with your young women there. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that would be, it would be good. Cause I, I understand like what I was just saying, it's like you, even though my dad hurt me, it's, I still wanted his approval and I still yeah. do. I yeah. still do. Yeah. And um, th th that bond is just something that can't easily be broken. It doesn't even, I mean, some people, it, I mean, I've heard a lot of different stories from different people that they had to cut it off. It's too toxic. I get that. But at the same time, there's still that kind of that longing, that, that child yeah. heart inside of you that there's a longing. Yeah. yeah. So what would you say to people who have been in our situations or just thinking about the clients that you have now, what would you say to someone um, that needs your help? I would say it's okay. It's okay mm -hmm. not to feel okay. It's okay mm -hmm. yeah. um, not to not to be able to fix things, but mm -hmm. also that um, we're not what's in here. We're not what's in our mm -hmm. mind. You know, we have um, ways, lots of ways to grow and change and do better for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we have the power to do that. Yeah. So try to help people realize and understand that they're not their past. They're mm -hmm. not their parents. Yes. Um, and they have lots of potential and a purpose. Yes. Mm. There's hope. There is hope. There's, yeah. There's hope for everybody out there. You want to make a change, reach out to Tracy. She's wonderful. And um, the world of coaching is helpful to so many people. And she's got a book. She's got a retreat coming up. She's got um, her whole program that can help you. She's highly skilled and trained. Um, one final comment, Tracy, that you want to give to the world. And um, what can they find you again? One more time. <laughs> um, TracyBerger.com. Um, I just want people to understand that they're there is, there is hope that um, mm -hmm. we can see each other through our stories and reach out to people, yes. you know, 
And if you're not comfortable reaching out to people, you don't have a coach, you don't have a good close friend, write mm -hmm. about it. Write about what you're feeling. Yeah. Write about what you're thinking. Um, how helpful that's been to me in my full life, all life. Um, just get it out in front of you so it's not yes. just bottled up. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Tracy. It was wonderful to have you on the show and um, we need to connect further. further yeah, further. thank you, Martin. It's been a pleasure also. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you all for listening and we'll see you next Friday, 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye. Thank you for listening to Transformation with Martine. Did listening today spark a sense of hope and possibility? Hold on to this feeling and tune in every second and fourth Friday at 10 a.m. Pacific for more inspiring conversations with Martine and her guests. They will show you there is hope and you are right where you need to be. Martine is dedicated to supporting you right where you are while launching you towards promise, passion, and possibility that leads to the fulfilled life your heart aches for. If you're tired of being stuck, schedule a complimentary consultation with Martine and get on the exciting path towards the life you want to be living. Visit martineemmons.com and make your appointment today.